I will start the recording. All right. So before we move on to the actual training, I just wanted to make a general acknowledgement, and that is that the funding for this training was provided uh, through the American Indian and Alaska Native Health Disparities Grant Program through the Office of Minority Health. And uh, there's a grant number for those of you who are interested. So in general, I like to go over a little bit of what the Urban Indian Health Institute is, uh, as we may be an organization that um, other people may not be aware of. So the mission of the Urban Indian Health Institute is to support the health and well-being of urban American Indian and Alaska Native communities through information, scientific inquiry, and technology. We conduct a variety of public health and research projects from surveillance to training and uh, have recently added in some evaluation activities. Uh, we attempt to fill a gap of information that may be lacking or not present in regards to urban uh, American Indian and Alaska Natives. The UIHI uh, has been established uh, since the year 2000, so we're approximately 17 years old. We are a division of the Seattle Indian Health Board, and we primarily work with serving urban American Indian and Alaska Natives with a focus on urban Indian health programs. For those of you who may not be familiar, IHS has what they call tribal epidemiology centers. Each of these are tasked with specific regions. So say for the uh, Northwest Tribal Epi Center, um, they do surveillance and activities with Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. Uh, the UIHI service region is all of, all of the urban Indian health programs. So it stretches across the nation. There are 33 programs, and I think they're in approximately 22 states. So for those of you who are interested, here's a map of urban Indian health programs in the US. Uh, maybe not right now, but at some point, uh, I always find it very useful to kind of go through and look at maps like this and figure out um, what services are actually sort of provided and the scope of work for um, each of the urban Indian health programs. So overall, this is uh, working through demystifying data and eliminating uh, AI and health disparities. This is attempted through information, partnerships, and training. The overall work aims to increase awareness of health disparities and improve the health and well being of urban American Indian and Alaska Natives. This health data literacy training seeks to increase the capacity of urban Indian health programs to use data to address health status uh, priorities. So before we begin the actual um, training module, there were a couple of things that I wanted to go over. The first being the intended scope of the training. Uh, I attempt to have as clear expectations as possible and um, you know, moving forward, wouldn't want anybody to go into the training thinking that they were going to acquire something that perhaps they weren't. So this training is targeted at, uh, targeted for urban Indian health programs that are looking to be able to identify relevant health information to either intervene with client populations, provide information to providers, or uh, apply for grants, uh, these sorts of tasks. It's meant for people with, say, like uh, limited data capabilities uh, who may need to be able to find information and process information through online portals. Uh, what this training isn't intended for is uh, people who are looking for maybe more in-depth guides to particular statistical packages like SPSS, data, SAS, those sorts of things, or who may be looking at how to analyze or interpret uh, data in a more statistically robust fashion. So we won't be going over, uh, say, like regression, um, linear logistic, or other types of statistical models. Instead, it'll be looking at, you know, kind of general uh, statistical methods that are used for um, kind of national level health surveillance. So 
what I do at the Urban Indian Health Institute is primarily work with a lot of these larger data sets. Uh, I'm given technical assistance and data requests from Urban Indian Health programs. And um, what I've identified is sometimes that there's this difficulty of going from having this more nebulous question of, um, well, what I need diabetes information to operationalizing it and then uh, finding relevant information, particularly for uh, American Indians and Alaska Natives. So I'm attempting to kind of provide some of that general information through this training. So in the training, we're gonna go from creating a question, finding resources, evaluating data sources, data analysis slash access, and data documentation and tracking. Uh, the next training, which will be provided next Wednesday, is going to be looking at um, sort of after we've acquired a lot of these different data points, tables, uh, so on and so forth, how do we then kind of figure out what information is going to be most useful and how to present that data? Um, so with that being said, we'll move on to the next slide. So the first thing, um, I always look at when attempting to try to find information is to create as strong of a foundation as possible. And that's primarily creating a question. The more specific we can be about how we develop a question, the better able we're gonna to be to find information relevant to that. So in this situation, uh, we start off with this kind of idea of um, as a UIHP, wanting to identify what's going to help our client population. So first, what are we under, interested in understanding? So as a UIHP, we may look at our population and say, while there may be general health trends or disparities, uh, what we specifically want to focus on is American Indians and Alaska Natives, with a slight preference towards uh, urban American Indians and Alaska Natives. So that's relatively easy to identify. Now, condition may be a little bit more difficult and more case dependent. Uh, so as I'm sure many people are able to sort of understand and identify, diabetes has been a prevalent problem in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. Uh, so in being able to either identify funding sources or general need, we can then say, okay, well, uh, I'm interested in diabetes as a condition. Now, other characteristics. This is one thing that I find very useful and is oftentimes neglected is sort of these like auxiliary branches of a particular condition of interest. So looking at those things that are a tad bit more valuable, uh, may not necessarily be condition specific, but may lend some insight. So this might be body mass index, um, youth behaviors, those sorts of things. Um, and moving forward, even prior to analysis, I always uh, think it's very beneficial to think and try to think for how this information is potentially going to be used. And that may guide how we decide to interact with the information and what uh, we sort of include or exclude uh, based off of how we're planning on using it. Now, this isn't always a necessary step, but I find it useful in the situations where we can go into it with an idea. So one thing that um, anybody who sort of works with me long enough will sort of figure out is um, Oftentimes, the first place that I start is Google. And this is to sort of get an idea of what's out there and, and what's available. Uh, because as somebody who's made the mistake multiple times, uh, there's nothing worse than sort of uh, duplicating efforts. Uh, and a lot of times, the amount of time that people have um, to be able to do these sorts of things is limited. So when possible, I like to try to look and say, how can um, we best utilize these resources. So I have that pulled up. As we look here, American Indian uh, diabetes, there are quite a few resources. What we'll notice as we sort of move through these, uh, I'm waiting for my internet, is that you know we see some relevant information, 16% of AIANs, um, have the highest age-adjusted prevalence. Okay, that's useful information. But even as we kind of move through these other links, 
uh, we're not really finding a lot of specific information or things that are relevant to what we're attempting to kind of answer. So we'll go through, and here's one by IHS. And again, we find interesting information about the general AIAM population, the number of federally recognized tribes, and here is some interesting information about um, diabetes and AIA in communities. Now, when attempting to be critical about this information, what we see is that um, it's from 2009, which is somewhat outdated. Um, and a lot of the information that we're having is all pre-2010. But it gives us an idea of what we might come to expect uh, given general trends of AI and uh, in relation to diabetes moving forward as we're sort of being able to put a lot of this future information within context. So let me go down and here's a link from the CDC. And what we're seeing is something that's watermark drafts. So that's also not all that inf uh, informative as far as being able to pull relevant information. So what we see is that there's sort of a lack of recent information, area specific information, and information about the sample. Because one thing that uh, in presenting any data you should be prepared for is people kind of coming forward and saying, okay, well, uh, you have this percentage, how many people were actually sampled? What was the proportion of AI ANs within the sample? What was the scope you know, uh, of the research as a whole? And these things are oftentimes hard to answer when you pull information from uh, these sort of like secondary sources. So now we're going to move into sort of uh, saying, well, we may not be able to acquire the information we need uh, from online print sources. Uh, how do we sort of find information that we may be able to pull ourselves? So in this, we're going to be moving towards figuring out how to find and evaluate overall um, just kind of data quality. So we'll go back to my friend Google. And what we find here are a few different things. So the first real link is healthdata.gov. Now, this is kind of gets at a divergent uh, understanding of like what constitutes data uh, for some people they may use data in the sense that the numbers that they're presenting on are data, and that is true, um, but also some people may be looking for, say, like data sets. Um, well, some people may have had better luck with this site. Uh, oftentimes I find it way too difficult to use. Uh, so oftentimes as far as like uh, recommendations to more, um, I guess just less versed individuals as far as acquiring and interpreting data sets, I try to steer them away from these sites because it, it, it's not exactly user friendly or you know, oftentimes able to be analyzed online. So we sort of go through and um, you know the Berkeley site offers some information, but um, not what we really need. And what we see is a government site, which is usually a good sign as far as like the breadth of information that's provided. And we see many data chart series, databases and repositories that span quite a few different uh, subjects. Now, the nice thing about these are that um, they offer kind of brief descriptions, but then also active links to each of the databases. So it's uh, very useful to be able to kind of go in with a particular area of interest and sort of like start to weed through these. Um, the process overall can be pretty time intensive, but um, you find quite a bit of relevant information. Now, usually as far as AI and information, what I attempt to look for are the government surveillance systems and larger databases, particularly because it can be very difficult to uh, not only have a large enough AI and sample to um, really draw conclusions, but beyond that, like even as far as releasing data, um, you need a relatively large sample to be able to kind of report on those things. 
So in the interest of time and not going through each of these specifically, uh, main things that we're looking at for government versus non-government, I tend to lean towards government, and then proper documentation. Uh, that way you're able to sort of track the information and represent it when people uh, decide to probe you or provide inquiries. So in kind of going through this, uh, I decided to kind of parse down um, that entire list into four data sets that I felt like were really interesting as far as being able to kind of get at dif different aspects of diabetes. So the first one is the behavioral risk factor surveillance system provided through the CDC, the youth risk behavior surveillance system, uh, the CDC wide ranging online data for epidemiological research, and the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, uh, substance provided through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Data Archive. Now, uh, a lot of these portals aren't uniform, and each of them have some of their so own nuances as far as navigating through them. So this training is more of just sort of being able to kind of troubleshoot and work through multiple online portals. Uh, if you are interested in looking more in depth about a particular, or like how to navigate one, uh, our prior first module, which is available on our website, uh, goes over just CDC Wonder. So we'll start with the first uh, BRFS, so like the behavioral risk factor surveillance system. Uh, one thing that's always good as far as being able to track uh, what you're doing and where all the information came from is to be able to find these sort of like general um, uh, well, I guess that's close out of that internet's not liking me. Um, so when we track down the behavioral risk factor surveillance system, we're brought to this page. Oops. Uh, so we have the Burfus web enabled analysis tool. So for this, we're gonna to go to cross tabulation because logistic regression and its interpretation may be outside the scope of what we're doing today. So in this situation, we're gonna collect the most recent year because the most recent information is most likely to be relevant to what we're uh, hoping to kind of get across. So here we're given kind of like these different panes. Um, now, some of this may differ as a function of what you're interested in. Say you're a UIHP located in California, you may, you may want California-specific estimates, but right now we're going to go at a national level. So we'll leave it at all states and all territories. As we move through these differing options, you look in alcohol consumption, arthritis, asthma, cholesterol, uh, chronic health, conditions. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything about diabetes or AINs or race categories. Now what we see down here is uh, competed preferred race. Uh, it's always nice to try to start as general as possible and then decide to move in based off of the way that you see that they uh, decide to compute race. And then what we see as far as moving down past uh, demographic information is that we're provided information about diabetes. So there were diabetes specific questions. And here we have ever told uh, you have diabetes. So we'll select that. Now controlling can be uh, beneficial, but it also kind of leads towards difficulties in understanding, uh, particularly when trying to just kind of convey it to lay people. I try to stay away from this if we're uh, looking at just kind of general uh, information. And as we go down here, we have uh, different options. So we'd like to look at sample size to figure out how many AINs they had, row percentages, 
standard error because that can be beneficial, but also try to keep it somewhat to a minimum as far as like how big our tables are gonna be. So as you can see here, it's going to be uh, quite big. So again, the internet's taking a little while, but here we're presented with a crosstab table. This gives us a lot of relevant information because we can see that there were 44,000 uh, people who identified as white who were diagnosed with diabetes. Here we see it's 10% of the total population. And uh, here we see that approximately 1% were diagnosed, but during pregnancy. As we move down to AIANs, we see that 14.7% of uh, the sample of AIANs uh, said that they were diagnosed with diabetes with 1.2% uh, diagnosed during pregnancy. Now this is really in interesting information and stuff that we may be able to use uh, after this. So as we kind of move through, we see um, you know, other racial categories and while all of this information may not be relevant to what we're doing, we can make sure to download this uh, Excel sheet. So just to be able to look at it this time, we see that what's being provided What's being provided is an Excel version of the uh, crosstab that we just saw. Now this can, is easy enough to sort of go through and trim depending on what you may or may not be interested in. Maybe this may not be as relevant. Uh, we can kind of delete categories and that sort of thing. Um, but in kind of moving around and exploring some of these different aspects, one thing that I saw on my way to uh, the racial demographic information is body mass index. And categorical variable, what that means is that it's split up into general categories. So we'll run sort of the same thing. Now, sometimes when I'm running these sorts of things, uh, you run into um, sort of like oddball uh, situation. So if you were to go to five five race categories, it may not have AIN. So sometimes it kind of takes like a trial and error sort of approach to try to find the information that's most relevant to you. So to be able to kind of highlight, here we see AIANs, normal body weight 29%, overweight 34, obese 34. Oftentimes uh, whites are used as a sample group. So what we find is 33.8 normal, 35.9 overweight, and 28.5 obese. Now when we compare those two, we sort of see this like uh, X situation where it's almost like the percentage of normal weight are being transferred to obese for AIANs. So again, this is gonna be relevant information and we'll decide to track that. As you see, it also downloads with a similar naming convention. Um, I recommend going in and resaving those uh, with like relevant titles. So we've sort of explored and looked at like some of the possibilities of the BRFA system. Now, because of data protections, like all of the questions and ability to break things down aren't available online. Sorry, one second. Uh, sorry, my PowerPoint isn't responding to me right now. Uh, well, 
All right. Well, it seems like PowerPoint is not agreeing with me. Well, in the interest of time, uh, a, a lot of the, the sites that are provided uh, just provide links to data locations, uh, information about the overall, um, just kind of like database that's being used. So we'll sort of uh, somewhat free ball this as um, we're experiencing some difficulties with uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so here we're at the Yerbis, and I, I find this really interesting to use. So we'll go to the Youth Online Data Analysis Tool. And what we see is we're provided some like general inquiry categories, uh, while also kind of selecting general location. So here we'll do uh, something similar and say we're interested in estimates for the United States. Now, when we're looking around here, we have differing categories like sexual behavior, tobacco use, unintentional injuries and violence, so on and so forth. These things may be uh, interesting, but not necessarily relevant. So here we'll kind of look at obesity, overweight, and weight control. So here it provides us uh, differing categories. Now we'll interpret this through greater risk because um, it's, it's easier sometimes to interpret those numbers because higher numbers would uh, mean they were at greater risk. Um, sometimes the inverse of that, is, while useful, can be difficult. So we'll look at the number of people who were, had obesity. So what we see here is sort of this data portal. Uh, it's providing us information about national and states, uh, but we don't see anything about AINs. So if we go through and look at column variables, we see a race option. So we can select that. And here we need to filter it to only provide information about the US. So what we see here for AIANs is that 15.9% uh, ident were identified as obese well, 12% of whites. And we have some estimates as far as um, standard error. Now we can attempt to compare the two and hit compare. My computer seems to not be agreeing with me today. Okay, so here we are. Now generally a, a p-value of less than 0 0.05 is a standard that people use to identify differences between numbers. So what we see here is probably given the sample, sample size right here, 6,000 versus 150, uh, they weren't really able to identify a difference. So it may be information that's useful, but uh, may not be able to be used outside of just kind of identifying general trends. Now in exploring a lot of this information, um, what we see is that 
there is an all questions option, which is somewhat unique to this database, but also really interesting. So one thing, remember AI and second from the inside, uh, non-Hispanic whites second from the outside. We have questions about unintentional injury and violence, tobacco use, alcohol and other drug use, and sexual behaviors, dietary behaviors. So we see a lot of similarities, 4.2, 4.9. We see some slight differences as far as whether or not they had a bottle of soda or pop. And they seem to be relatively similar. Uh, seems to be slight increases as far as likelihood of having a meal also, or breakfast all seven days. And we're able to get some information about physical activity and overweight or obesity. Um, So this is a situation where the system itself allows you to kind of go in and explore differing statistics on uh, each of these groups. So you can see like, here's our number 15.9 and 12.4 as far as had obesity, slightly decreased as, as opposed to being described as overweight, which it's nice here that they provide a definition. And then uh, we see slight differences here as far as describing themselves as overweight. So approximately 40% describe themselves as overweight versus 30% of uh, non-Hispanic whites. So we can go through and in a similar fashion, uh, export this to Excel, which allows us to take it offline and um, sort of like format it differently on our own time. So there we go, a similar naming convention as the previous one uh, with numbers and dashes preferred over uh, numbers and names. Uh, so this is kind of an orientation to the uh, Yerbis, which while similar to the Burfus, um, has a completely different data portal and I think like some considerations as far as how you navigate through it. Now, it is nice because you can go through and look through particular health questions sections. So this might make it easier to read. Uh, and then also you potentially could parse this down by differing categories. Like uh, say your program was interested in male or intervening with males. But what you do run into uh, in parsing the, the data set down more is that uh, there may not be uh, a large enough population for it to provide you reliable estimates. Whereas as a whole, um, AIANs were, but in parse down, they were not. So we're not able to really see it right now because um, the system's kind of acting up, but if you go to the uh, PowerPoint that'll be provided with this training, uh, there is information about um, sort of just like general tracking. So now we'll kind of go through a, a general orientation as far as like some of the wonder, the CDC wonder systems. So one of the nice things here is it's sort of uh, its own general uh, area. So one thing that I think might be useful that wasn't available in other things is uh, mortality. So we can look here, detail mortality, underlying cause of death. So we can select there. Now I've already read through this, but it's always important to uh, read through. A lot of times they have data use restrictions and expectations about the use of data, while also informing you about uh, what happens if you violate these rules. Um, so I'll agree. As we're moving through this, it looks uh, slightly different than any of the other ones that we've used. And we'll look into what are we going to group our results by. Some people may be interested in census region, but for what we're attempting to look at, that isn't really as relevant. So we'll go down to demographic groups and race. Okay. So now we'll kind of move down and we'll look. So here's 2013 urbanization. 
Now that's something that's interesting that wasn't available in other data sets. So as a UIHP, I would go in and say, okay, well, there's large central fringe uh, metro, medium metro, and small metro. Okay, well, that all seems like interesting information for me uh, because it may be more relevant to my population. So here is also another important consideration as far as Hispanic origin. Are you interested in looking at all AIANs or um, just Hispanic AIANs or non-Hispanic AIANs? Uh, for this situation, we'll decide to stay with all origins. Next, we're brought into this data pane. Now, it's a lot of these are very overwhelming when you first attempt to look at them, but uh, they provide a lot of customization. So one thing that I attempt to do is grab multiple years, like maybe in increments of five, because when you start looking at AIA and stuff and breaking it down, um, sometimes the overall rate may become more unstable, the less observations they are. So if you're able to aggregate some of these things over a particular set of years, it might give you relevant information, where you can also say, I'm interested in uh, just occurrences that happened last or in 2015. These are also some useful information, but may, may not be relevant to what we're attempting to look at diabetes wise. You can look at death prevalence on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday for a particular condition, while also seeing if autopsies were uh, done or whether it was in different facilities. So in this sort of a situation, we have uh, ICD-10 uh, codes. Um, now, some of these things you may not necessarily know how, where they are grouped in. I know for um, diabetes specifically, it's an endocrine or, or no. Well, we will go search. The one annoying thing about this is it uh, sort of starts you out from just like the general page, so you have to go in. So we'll split diabetes search. So here we have this diabetes. So in selecting it, we'll say okay. Um, we'll send it. Depending on how many years you ask and the complexity of what you ask, this can uh, take quite a while, but luckily our request is relatively simple. And here we're given estimates. So here, AIANs, we look across, the crude rate per 100,000 is 15. So they're expecting approximately 15.7 deaths per 100,000 AIANs. We go down to our usual reference group of non-Hispanic whites and we're at 22.9. Now this seems to be an opposite trend of what we would expect given um, what we know about AINs. So this is a sort of situation where I try to go back and say, okay, well, what have we selected? As we're moving down here, we look and we can see like, okay, well, what we're choosing is deaths, population, and crude rate. Okay, well, there's an option here for age-adjusted rate. This is important to be able to look at and troubleshoot through these sorts of things because um, what we know about AINs is that their population distribution uh, varies somewhat from the overall population distribution. So adjusting for age can make quite a difference when um, sort of understanding these general trends. So we'll, we'll select age adjusted rate and provide a confidence interval around it. We'll keep everything relatively the same. and we'll see what this does as far as our overall rate. All right, so as we can see here, it actually seems to change quite a bit. The age adjusted rate for Hispanic and non-Hispanic AIANs is 23.9 per 100,000. That shifted quite a bit from this 15.7 crew rate estimate that we came to earlier. Now, when we move down to whites, what we see is sort of this exact inverse relationship where originally their crude rate was placed at 
and their age-adjusted rate was at 18.7. So what we see here is that through uh, exploring our available options and trying to better account for AIA and data, we essentially come to the exact opposite conclusion that we would have came to if we only analyzed the crude rate. There are many options available, like through the, the wonder. Now let's say instead people were interested in non-Hispanic AIANs and only interested in individuals who were maybe at a greater likelihood of actually dying from uh, diabetes. So here we'll select um, five different age groups. And see here we have uh, estimates for just those age groups. So what we find for AIANs in this situation is for the age groups that we identified, so here it's essentially 35 to 85 plus, uh, AIANs are at a considerably higher increased likelihood of dying from diabetes than uh, white individuals. So here it's almost approximately twice as likely. That may be useful information if what we're attempting to kind of intervene with is either older, younger, or some population or uh, that we may be advocating for that isn't just across the lifespan. Uh, we could also go into various other sorts of things as far as identifying specific groups or that sort of thing or maybe only looking at those who are in the largest metropolitan areas or in also particular states. This can also be broken down. See, we'll, we'll choose Alabama and open it. And then what we find here are actually county codes or yeah, county codes for each of the um, counties in Alabama. Now, if you control click, you can just select a subset, which may be more uh, relevant to what you're doing in Alabama. So that would provide you estimates uh, across each of those counties in the state. Now, as uh, what you'll often experience with AIEN data is that that also has the likelihood of drastically reducing your overall estimates. So as I mentioned earlier, if we were to do just these groups in Alabama, we'll jump it up to all origins, um, and then decide to run it. We see that they're not able to report on anything but the 21 uh, white deaths that happened. This is because the cells themselves are way too small, um, so the CDC won't allow that information to be released. This is a situation where if we want to provide it or have an estimate, we may need to actually go um, multiple years. So we'll go 2006 to 2015, and we'll see if that changes what's being reported. What we find here is that uh, even amongst those years, there's probably still too few deaths, but it does change as far as being able to kind of report on more. This is kind of a random example, but uh, even if we were to say go over 1999 to 2015, that might uh, change quite a bit. Uh, and while it may not be the most relevant health information that is being provided, uh, in sort of a situation where if what you really wanna know is uh, relevant to specific counties, um, it may be the best information that you have to, uh, or are able to provide. So we'll go back down and, oops, let's go to the whole US, readjust our, our age range or our year range. 
And likewise, here's an export button that'll provide a text file. That provides all of the relevant information. Uh, although also there's uh, different options as far as saving. You can create uh, accounts through Blender and save like your specific search results. So the last data set that I wanted to go over, and I think it's one that oftentimes people don't really look at or think about is um, differing or like health surveys offered through SAMHSA um, and their data repository. So here we'll go to analyze data online because oftentimes that usually ends up leading us to places where we want to be. We have two options, one for restricted data, which is not yet available, and then public use data analyst, uh, analysis system. So we'll enter into that. What we see is of various amounts of public, publicly available surveys for analysis. We'll go into the 2015 health data or uh, What we see is again quite a bit different of an actual assist or than what we're used to. So here we'll kind of go through, and a lot of these are kind of organized slightly better than other ones that were pretty large. And we'll kind of go through looking for sort of if they even have information about American Indians and Alaska Natives. So as we're going down, we see demographics. So we have uh, final edited age, armed forces, Vietnam era, overall health, sexual attraction, how well they speak English. Okay, so then we're gonna move into in inputted demographics. Marital status, education. We'll go down even more. Oh, here, see, we have new race too. So, uh, will set as a row. Now in attempting to look to see if they have any information about um, diabetes, we'll go in and look from the top. Or, yeah. um, So we'll go into health. We see things about pregnancy, uh, cutting down. Cancer, heart condition, COPD, kidney disease. So we'll type in diabetes. I were told you had diabetes slash sugar, so we'll set that as a column. So what we see here is uh, them sort of like mocking out what this table is going to look like. So here we also see um, okay, um, various options. So here we'll go through and run across tab. Uh, we could also switch these. So in this situation, we'll switch it. What we see is that um, on Hispanic whites, approximately 21.77% endorse having diabetes or having ever been told they had diabetes. And American Indian and Alaska Natives were at 28.35%. So this kind of offers us some information that uh, while we may have had uh, similar estimates at, in different databases, 
offers strength and credence to kind of say, well, what we're seeing isn't just an artifact of that one particular database system. So we can, um, where is the export option? Oh, as a uh, comma separated values or as a PNG. So we could just export this. And we have a picture of our table that we're able to save and uh, use in the future when we end up trying to uh, actually use a lot of this information. All right, so the other things I wanted to be able to touch on, and we'll kind of just, never mind. Um, is being able to make sure that um, data-wise, um, you can sort of think about how you're going to store all the information prior to acquiring all of it. So is it, does it mean having a single Excel sheet that has all of the relevant information for each of these databases along with like data documentation and location? Or, um, Also being able to kind of document how these outside organizations expect your information to be, or their information to be used. Now with that being said, uh, I know we covered quite a bit of information and um, went through a lot of different programs, uh, but I'm going to stop the recording and um, open up the floor to any discussion or questions that uh, anybody may have. So.